Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Christopher from AWS, and today I'm joined by Ali from Fortinet. How are you doing? Good to be here. Excellent. What does Fortinet do? Fortinet secures the largest enterprises around the world. At Fortinet, we secure customers journey to the cloud with full visibility and control that enables secure applications and connectivity. OK. And today we're talking about uh, FortiWeb Cloud WAF here, correct? Correct. Excellent. So we have launched a service, new service on AWS Marketplace. It's called, as you mentioned, it's called FortiWeb Cloud WAF as a service. It's a solution that we have launched to take advantage of AWS services to make it a true cloud native solution. Excellent. And, and what we're looking at here is both a combination of the control plane and the data plane here. So let's take this journey from the top. Let's go from the control plane. So how does your customers come into this? So we have CloudFront in, as, as the top layer that what happens is when customers requests come in from the top, CloudFront helps cache. And yep. as a result, it accelerates those requests. Now, we have static web content stored on S3. Yep. We also have API gateway that acts as a front door to codes running on AWS Lambda functions. And this is just fronting Lambdas at this point in time? Exactly, okay. correct. AWS Lambda functions itself, then, it stores customers' configuration on DynamoDB database. It also pushes the configuration to 40 web cloud clusters. OK. And so this is, this is effectively uh, enabling your customers to come in to customize their rules, uh, make changes, accept the defaults, et cetera. Is that correct? Correct, exactly. That's, that's exactly what we do in the management plane. The whole UI, we have redesigned it to make it a true serverless architecture. OK. And so looking at this is really interesting. So you've got, obviously, a, 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 a complete pipeline here over on US 1, and you have one over here on EU Central 1 as well. So distinct regions in that respect. What's really interesting about this pattern is you've just not adopted multi-region for disaster recovery purposes. There's another reason. There are multiple reasons, actually. First of all, as we know, many customers live in countries that come from countries that have certain regulatory and compliance requirements. Yeah data sovereignty requirements, for example. Uh -huh. So for those customers, I think that's key. Also, by keeping traffic close to where application is running, we provide much better performance. Understood. And last but not least, by making the solution more cost effective. And how we do it is we make sure the traffic stays within the region. As we all know, a big part of AWS egress traffic cost or traffic cost comes from egress traffic. Yeah. And that's why by doing that, by keeping the traffic inside within the region, we allow a cost-effective solution. As a result, we have less cost to share with our customers. Understood. And so you're storing this information. You're, you're passing it to twofold. One is to the, obviously, the 40 bed cloud cluster, cluster so that they can actually manage the actual WAF as it comes through in the requests. The other is down to DynamoDB. So why was your choice around DynamoDB here important to you? A couple of reasons I would highlight. DynamoDB, as we all know, is a NoSQL database. Yeah. And it's much easier to change or upgrade data structure on a DynamoDB database or NoSQL database in general compared to a traditional relational database such as you know, Aurora or any other database that we have. Excellent, excellent. And uh, here, obviously, is there any reason why you would want DynamoDB from a replication standpoint? Well, we have done that. Obviously, one reason would be disaster recovery, but that's a choice. I mean, if uh, yep. customers don't want to replicate it, even for S3, the same thing, that we can keep those information, those customer configuration within the same region. Understood. And so once this information is, is here and it's absolutely running, you've got this Elasticsearch in the middle. What are you using Elasticsearch for? So what we have done with our cloud, 40 web cloud WAF as a service is we have kept the core functionalities and capabilities of our traditional WAF yep. that we have on-prem or in other form factors, but also because we wanted to create a truly native cloud solution or cloud native solution. Yeah. We decided to offload some of the functionalities to Elasticsearch to take advantage of AWS Elasticsearch service for faster lookups, for faster filtering. So basically that piece, the whole logging piece now has been offloaded to Elasticsearch. Excellent. What I think is really compelling about this pattern is the fact that you're actually providing, you're, you're leveraging services yourself, right? So it's all serverless at this point in time. Exactly. And you're providing it to the customer, and you're doing so that, so that the actual service is as close to their applications as possible, which is really powerful. Obviously, to your point, it reduces down their overall costs, which is a really good idea in that respect. So this is really great. Exactly, yes. We have, uh, in fact, no EC2 instances, for example, or any, any VM that we need to maintain infrastructure for in our management plane. So we with the Lambda function, as mentioned before, we push the configuration here to the 40 web cloud cluster and also to the DynamoDB. And one thing I want to mention is our solution, it uses a machine learning technology. Right. It's a two-layer machine learning technology. Layer one, we do detect 
to try to detect anomalies, but then we have a layer, second layer, to make sure those anomalies are real threats. We run, we run through our uh, machine learning threat model empowered by 40 guard labs. And so you're retraining the model as time goes on with new traffic coming down the pipeline. Exactly, that's Excellent. correct. Well, this is a great model, so I really appreciate you coming in and sharing with us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me today. No problems. Thank you for joining us. This is my architecture. Thank you.